Hello, welcome back. So this is part two of JSON. So we're going to see um, hands-on, the practical here, how to use, how to, how to bring JSON uh, files and parse them, then uh, display them as objects or process them as objects. But before that, I really want to uh, refresh your memory about how to uh, work with objects or array of objects. All right, so this is an array, guys. It's the keys here, and there are another array values. Uh, let me take this one. So this is an array, you see, of two elements. Each element is an object. Remember, object is always curly brackets, then comma, and the third one, or the second one, sorry. I'm going to take this one and use it here. So if I want to get the keys here, the name, the age, and the proc, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this object one way, but this is a really uh, very uh, ingenious way. So we're going to use the uh, keyword keys, and here I'm going to put my array. It's called values here, isn't it? And I don't want all of them. I want only the first one because they are the same. Name, name, age, age, proc, proc. And if I do that, see what I get. Or if I go to the first one, see what I get. It's the same thing. Now, if I want to get the values... Oh, okay, let, let me change the name. The name is really misleading here. Uh, array objects. All right, so let's go back. So array objects here. Now, if I want to get the keys, I'm going to call them keys, receives object, predefined object here, uh, and I use the keys. Of what? Of array object, let's say zero. If I want the values, I have to use here values, keyword values, all right? And here, let's call them my value array. For just for the first object and for the second one, we're gonna use of course one, and we got the second set of values. So using this, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna work a lot with this. I'm gonna use them in the uh, JSON. All right, when we bring data, text data, and parse them into objects, then we want to display them into tables. So that's the purpose here. So. So what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to do the keys here this way, it's not really good. I'm going to call this uh, values or object array objects, give them meaningful names. And I need the keys. So the keys are going to be object dot keys. Just for you to see that this is my own variable. Keys and this is a keyword here, all right? Keys and array objects. All right, and that's the array itself, array objects. It gives me the whole, all the objects here. I could use value, but never mind. So I'm gonna take this, the keys here, and the array of objects themselves, and pass them to a create table. So a table will read the keys and the actual data and display them in a table. All right, so the keys will be the heading and array objects will be the row. So row number one and row number two. This is like a pattern, okay? A design pattern, if you like, if you want to call it. So I'm gonna create a table, create element table, then Step number one, we're going to add a heading. So I'm going to use create the TR, create element TR, then append this TR, sorry, my the TR to this, to my table here. So I can do it before or after, where, which I like. So now I'm going to do, I'm going to use the headings here. You can use for a loop or you can use for each. So the heading for each, uh, I'm not going to use the uh, MX6 version or lambda notation. I'm going to use the normal one. So, function 
and the headings or each element of the array begin and end and here I'm going to write my code so why do I need? I need to create a TD so TD uh, document dot create element and it's going to be a TD then TD create an element then what do you do? Uh, append child and document you're gonna create the text okay dot create element uh, create text node and the element itself Then tr dot append child, and you're gonna add the td to the tr. Then at the end we're gonna append the tr to my table, and that's the heading. Okay? Uh, no, sorry, that's not td th. This is really doesn't matter, but for uh, better re for readability, I'm gonna use the th here, of course. This is not necessarily the same, okay? TH is just a variable, but this is a must here. So save, and we're gonna try. File, so go here. I'm gonna put. Okay, so I already put the toggle points. So once I get the data, it's gonna go here. Good, so let's try them. There's an array of objects. So yeah, it's an array of objects. So object number one, object number two. Then the keys. See the keys here? Oh, not good. Uh, sorry, the keys should be array object zero. All right, that's why it's giving me zero and one. It should be name, age, and prop. So here I should really go. See zero and one. Should it be really, really this name, age, and prop. So I'm gonna go back and modify it. Save. Refresh. Alright, click on the get data and we are there. Now see the keys, now it's good, name, age and pro. I'm going to step into the create table, so I'm passing the heading, name, age, pro, and the rows, which are the two objects. Okay, an array, this is an array, can you see array two of two objects? Alright, so let's see here, so first is create a table my table here, okay, then create a TR, then for each element of the TR, uh, I'm having, uh, each element of the TR, create a TH, and append it to um, use the element inside the text, then append the child to the uh, TR. So this is wrong here, I should have here, uh, oh, it should be TR here. So once I prepare and create my TH and prepare it with the text, okay, I can append it to the TR. So this is just a review, a revision of how to manipulate arrays of objects. Then we're going to generalize this to arrays of objects that we bring them or pass them from uh, JSON. All right. So where are we? Click on this. Um, 
I did it very quick, but it's never mind. You 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 understand, isn't it? So I'm gonna uh, so now this is my table. You can really go to the elements here. If you want to see children, the first child there. Can you see it? In the HTML, and it looks good. T R T H name and so on. All right. So once I run this, I'm gonna attach the my table that is in the memory here to the body here. Good name, age, and pro. And the next step is to add the row. We're gonna add the row now. All right. So what should I do? So we are we are kind of creating a generic table or general table. Then we apply it to uh, our future uh, request or uh, application. So step number two. Add row for data. The rows are here. Okay. Only for an array of objects. I have an array of objects. All right. This means it's going to be something like this and like this. This is object, so it's going to be a key column value. And same thing here. Okay. So we're going to apply it to this one. So each element is an object here. All right, so let's get into it here. So I can use a for i a for loop, a normal loop, but I'm going to use a for each for the first one. So for, or we use for i. Okay, let's use the for each. In the rows here. Dot for each. I'm not going to use this lambda notation, and here we're going to use an anonymous function. So function and here, what do I need? The rows has is a rows or an array of objects. So I'm going to call this the element is an object, all right? And here, what do I do? For every object, which is going to be one line, remember, it's going to be something like this. This is the, my array and three objects. And each object has key one, colon, value one, then comma, key to column value 2 and so on so what I'm going to do this will be the element or the object here so for this one we're going to uh, iterate okay through all this key value uh, couples and extract the value here all right so for this object I need to create a row so what do I do I'm going to copy this Create a tr. Then once I create the tr, I'm gonna use the object. Okay, for this is a for loop, guys. But we don't use i going from zero i less than the length. No, we're gonna use the for for an object. So for key in. This is the syntax. In means you are using the object. All right, and this key in object means key one and key two. All right, so for each or for key in object object two, what do I do? I'm going to create the TD. So I'm going to copy this. Better. Don't waste time. I'm going to copy this and change them to TD. This is a TD. This is a TD. And of course, this is a TR. And here I'm creating a TD. And this is a TD, the TD variable. Now here, what I'm going to use I have to use the value. So how do I get the value? It's going to be obj, that's notation, guys, the array notation, and here I use the key. Let's try this one. That's it. You see how easy it is and how uh, concise the code is? You can rewrite it with the for loop as well, the normal for loop. Let's try this one. I'm going to put this one here. All right, I'm going to... Close this and hopefully it works. Okay, without errors, it's not. So let's see. debug the error. F12 source. Okay, get click, and I'm gonna put uh, toggle point. Oh, it's already here. Good. Uh, so, what's the, the rows here? Is it good? Yes, it's this one. So, if I go inside, 
What's the object? Good is the first object. Can you see? Now, what's the key? Okay, the object is good here. Four. Let's dive here. Now, this is the TD. It's a null. Now, the TD is created. Now, I add. I think that I didn't uh, append the TR to the table. That's, that's why. Okay. So, we follow the last step here. Last step is I have to append. So, you see, this is the inner loop for the row, and this is the outer loop for each row. Okay. So, I'm going to go. I create a TR. I attach the TD to TR, each TD. Then, after, right after this one, I'm going to attach the TR to my table. That's it. All right, so I'm going to close this one and redo. Rush. And voila. All right. So I'm going to give you the code, of course. Uh, no, I'm going to, yeah, we can continue here. So that's what we did for a normal array, hard call, a hard coded array. So here I'm going to use uh, JSON. All right. So JSON here, you see, JSON is not like the normal array. This is my normal array key attribute, but in JSON, the keys has to be with double quote. Can you see, guys, double quote? No, sorry, the keys here. This is the key. The grade or mark is a key. Grade is a key. Now, the other values, they can be numbers, or if they are strings, they must be in double quote, no single quote. Now, this is the first object, comma, second, third, and all this is a string. I didn't use double quote because it's it's going to conflict with this one unless I escape this, but I don't like escaping a lot. So I'm using the back tick. You, you remember, guys? So back tick here. Or you can use single quote as well, but in one line. So that's my, uh, let's call it JSON string. Okay, text or text. Let's call it text. My JSON text. So we're going to emu emulate this one. This could be in a, in a server, but we are using it here. Now, what do I do? Uh, whenever I click on the load button, I'm going to call process my array objects and pass what? I'm going to pass this. No. <clears throat> so when I pass this one, it's a text. It's not a real object. So I need to process it here. My, let's give it the same name. <clears throat> All right. And see what we're going to do. I'm going to... Uh, Save and F12, then code on the console here. Okay, I like to code on the console. So get data. And we are in the main. You see, this This is the past parameter. So I'm going to take this parameter and analyze it here. What do I need to do? So I need to transform this JSON text into JSON object. Okay. So we're using the parse. So let's call it my uh, object. How do you call it there? Array objects. Okay. Array objects. So that's my text. And this we're gonna use JSON dot parse. And what do I pass? This my JSON text. See what happened here? The parsing. <clears throat> now I have an array of pure Java objects. Now again, I can pass this to my create table and everything is good. So I'm going to copy this <clears throat> and go back to my code. Do you see the in incremental design, guys? And in this add even listener. Okay, so I'm going to use this. So array objects, JSON pass this text. And I'm going to, sorry, I did wrong earlier. I'm going to pass this as it was here. Because the process, my array objects is going to prepare them for the create table. I need them as this table. All right. So what do I do? Uh, I'm going to 
remove this and leave this one here and check control s and let's do this one Twenty-six. Drop arrow twenty-six. Yes, laser arrow twenty-six. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a double array. So let's try now. Okay, data. Um, no, I'm gonna drop it here. Refresh. All right. I click on get data and I'm trapped here. So array objects, my JSON, this is my text. When I run this, I would have an array of objects. Can you see that? Now I'm going to pass them to this process my array. So let's see how, what are the keys here. Good, can you see user ID mark and grade? And the array objects is the array object user ID mark and grade. And my code will uh, process properly. I'm going to remove this, remove this one, and remove this, and voila, it's good, it's really good. You see it? So that's how we take a JSON text and transform it into Java objects. Now we're going to remove this, which is hard coded, and we're going to use a real data file. So here I have, can you see here, guys, example PHP, no, server data, uh, employee JSON. So this is a JSON object okay it's a file uh, JSON object, sorry. it's a file json file text file all right and it's format it's well uh, well formatted and here i have uh, a key column and the value so the very first key is employee and here i have the big and the, the big object one big object all right it's here the 59 then inside that big object we have another attribute or key and an array in the array we have many objects so let's get this array of objects so what, what should we do so what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, dis uh, display these employees we did this one remember with the xml now we are doing it with the json so i have to modify a little bit of the code here and we're going to use the Ajax. So once I click on the button, I'm gonna use Ajax. So XML opt receives new HTTP request. Uh, XML HTTP HTTP request. Then uh, XML object dot open. So set up the communication here. I'm gonna use a get. And I'm going to use the URL and asynchronous. True. Don't use false. Now, URL is going to be what? It's the location of the resource. So, server data slash uh, employees dot JSON. I hope I didn't make any typo. Then we're gonna listen or send XML orbs dot send the request to the server. Then we're gonna listen for an answer. So what do we do? Uh, XML orbs dot add event listener, and we're gonna add. We're gonna listen for this event. Read the state change from 0, 1, 2, 3 until 4 and here we're going to use an anonymous function meaning that every time the ready state change we're going to run this anonymous function 
what do we do in a numeric function? We're going to test if this dot ready state is equal to uh, 4, means we got it on the client side. And no problem, the file is found, there is, there is no, the file is found, and there is no error there. Uh, and uh, this dot status equal equal to 200 the sign or the code for successful we're gonna get our text so i'm gonna copy this you're gonna get our text okay uh, so the text here was is the file or it's going to be saved in this the xml http request object dot response response text the moment you get it we parse it the moment I get this one I'm gonna transform it into Java pure Java objects why because I already defined a method a generic method kind of generic design method that will go through the array of objects and display their keys as the heading and go through the values and display them in the table. So this will be should be running properly for this one as well. So save and let's try this. I'm going to click here, see what happened. I have an error. XML new XML HTTP request. Oh, HTTP request. Sorry. Uh, okay. XML HTTP request. Okay, guys, remember it's case sensitive. So. All right, so I'm there. I'm gonna create the XML. Ah, it's not saved. Or oh, maybe I didn't save. Yeah, I didn't save. Control S. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go inside the success here. I'm going to put the, uh, the toggle point there. I'm trapped there now. Ready state is 4 and status is 200. Can you see it? Now, my response text, guys, do you see the response text? It has all the employees. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to parse it. See what happened here? I have an array of objects. You see, uh, not an area object. So, oh, good. I have an object here. Sorry, I have an object. Can you see? Employees and this one. So, to get to the area of objects, I have to go to employees, employee. Let me show you here. That's why I prefer to work on the console. So, you see, it's an object, guys. Array of. It's not array objects. It's a curly bracket here. Curly bracket. It's an object of an array of objects. So, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use this dot employees and dot employee now it's an array can you see it uh, let's modify the name here the objects object or the object the big object from a text to an object because JSON is about the big object inside it could be uh, day key value and it can be sub objects or arrays of objects so it can be really nested to a certain level now I prefer to name things properly alright so the object 
the object. Then if I go to employees, it's another object. And if I go to the employee, it's an array. Let's see it here. Uh, so it's here, it's an object, the first one. When I go to the employee, it's an object that is sub-object of this one. When I go to employees, it's going to give me an array of many objects. So I have to descend to till, till the employee, employees, employee, to get my array of objects. Okay, so array is, sorry, this will be my array. You see guys here? If I click here, I would have my arrays. So what I'm going to do in my code here to make it work with the, I have to use whatever I copied here. Uh, process my array object. Probably array object better. All right, so let's see whether this will work properly now. If you are lucky, you should be. Yes, good. Can you see? So it's really working for different kind of uh, examples. So this means the code here is kind of powerful. This code here is very generic. All right. And you can see also that this code is not changing. I'm just preparing the stuff here. And it's very readable, very fast, efficient. Okay. And these were only the examples that we used them earlier. Uh, so that's it. We have another example. You can bring PHP as well. All right, because it's going to create an object. But if you use PHP, you see, and you create your object, you in order to echo it or send the uh, result, you have to JS in code. It's a predefined function in PHP for your object. It's going to be a string. It's like stringify here. Okay. This is like a real object, and this is like the st stringify, taking an object, making it a string. Because from the server, we always must bring a string. From the server, I always have to bring a string, okay? If my data is this way, can you see here, an array of an object, key value, key value, key, now the value is another array. If you have a sub-array, it's not going to work. So you have to modify a little bit your the code. All right. So I'm going to pause this data uh, or this demo. And uh, for your project, you're going to do uh, you're going to bring data from the server using XML and JSON. Thank you.